Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish Boat. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Renovation Sport Fish. Uh, we are in a location uh, in my driveway. Uh, beautiful day out, but a noisy day. Grass being cut over here. I got bugs buzzing up in the trees, and I've got a cardinal and its babies chirping up behind me. That you'll hear once in a while. But other than that, it's a great location to film. Uh, this apparatus in front of me here is my steam bending thing I concocted uh, because we're going to be looking at uh, some mahogany trim that I installed up on the flybridge this in this video, and this is what I used to bend it. Uh, we're going to go over all this in the video. Also going to see some more uh, pieces being painted up on the flybridge, and we're also going to cover uh, the uh, fiberglassing of the foredeck. So um, yeah, one of the things too at the end of this video, I have an announcement for all my viewers or the viewers that actually watch the videos right when they come out or right around when they come out. Uh, the release dates for September, October, and November. I'm going to tweak them a little bit. So I'll talk about that right at the end when I'm closing this thing out uh, for you guys. So yeah, let's uh, let's get started with this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is the uh, mahogany dashboard up on the flybridge. Um, before we get into the pictures though, I'm going to do a little bit of a sketch to try to explain uh, how the factory had made this uh, dashboard and how uh, I was going to do it. So. Let's take a quick look at that. The factory dashboard is kind of a V-shape, a little more radical than I'm showing here. But to make this out of one piece of wood, the factory would have had to use a really wide piece of wood. So I think that's why they made it out of plywood, but that's just my theory. My idea is to take a narrower piece of wood, cut it in half, that way the grain would line up on both pieces, and then cut a triangle out of each piece and connect them together with epoxy and biscuits. Then I was going to cut the dashboard shape out of that. Once the shape was cut out, then I cut a notch for the helm station. Now the one problem with this design is the end grain on the sides was exposed. So I had to cut out a little notch piece on each side and then take the uh, side trim and cut the chunk out of that at the top and install that on either end using biscuits and a screw in each one. Okay, so now we're in the uh, shop. It was a little noisy out there. Plus, I'm going to be talking about some of the um, equipment here and working on a mock-up. So, anyways, um, this is the uh, piece of side trim that we're going to be installing on the mock-up. It's similar to um, the piece of trim I used on the boat, but it's wider. Um, I used it somewhere else on the boat, but um, I had a scrap of it, so that's why I'm showing it. But the profile basically matches uh, what I, I used on the uh, flybridge. Uh, for this for the sidewall trim okay, so here's a little bit closer look at the uh, the piece you can see the profile it's got this I guess it's a dado I've always called it a channel but it's a kind of a dado joint and this is the straight cutting bit I used on this router table um, to cut this just cut it a little bit wider than the uh, width of the sidewall plywood just so I'd have a little room to move it around and like I said, this piece is a little bit wider than what I actually put on. 
and then I round it over the edges with a round over bit. And this is my router table here. It's a little miniature uh, portable job. And it's got a uh, straight um, kind of fence on it that you can use and um, yeah, it works, works okay. Uh, there was two reasons why I had to um, steam bend this piece of trim on top of the sidewall. One was the obvious. There was a top of the sidewall had an arc to it so I had to match that. But the, uh, the other one was the dashboard had a camber to it and the sidewalls are tipped in this way and so the piece of trim would have to come up and then turn and have a twist right at the top. Um, and so that was the most critical part of the actual bending. Uh, so the mold itself, I made it out of plywood, kind of matched the thickness of the sidewall, matched the arc of it as well. Um, and then to use it, I actually um, bolted it right to the flat work surface and put some spacers under it. And I put spacers under it so that this lip on the bottom of the piece of trim would go right under it and clamp it on, uh, clamp it right onto uh, the mold without being caught up anywhere. Uh, and that also allowed the bottom surface of the piece of trim to sit on a flat surface so I wasn't getting any weird twisting in uh, this direction here. Uh, another feature of the mold itself was the movable piece I screwed on near the top edge to introduce the twist because you know, I use one mold, so that piece had to be either on the left or the right. I made it a lot thicker than I really needed for the twist, so it introduced more twist than I needed because I knew it was going to go back to its original shape a little bit. Um, so that's it for the mold. Now we'll get on to the um, steam generator. Okay, so I guess we'll just start with the heart of the system here for steam bending. And that's this, I'll turn it this way because it's not as crushed up a lot. You can read it. It's a steam generator. Um, I bought this at Hamilton Marine up in Maine through mail order. Uh, I think at, time, at the time I believe it cost like $70, but don't quote me on that. Um, you have to check it out for yourself. But it's a nice little unit. So I'll show you what uh, comes in that box. Uh, of course you get the unit itself here. Uh, that's where you plug it in on the back. This is where you hook the hose up on this side and you fill it with water here. And that's that. Uh, comes with a hose. Here's the hose. Also comes with a fitting. It's on my it's on my box here, my my uh, PVC pipe box I made. I'll show you that after. Uh, of course, cord, plugging it in, and uh, a little set of instructions here. It doesn't go through a lot. Most of it's all about warning and how dangerous it is to uh, steam bend. Um, so you probably want to read that so you don't uh, hurt yourself. But um, it also gives uh, a little description of how to make a steam box, what materials you might want to use, and uh, you know how long it would take to steam uh, certain thicknesses of wood and uh, the temperatures you want to get it at and all this kind of stuff. So it's, it's a small little thing it's not a lot of reading so it's pretty uh it's pretty good i like this works good so, that's that uh of course for those instructions uh they want you to use something to protect yourself from burning so i use these uh welding gloves to handle the wood had those already uh, i use this thermometer to check the temperature now this only goes up to about 190. It's just a meat thermometer. You put them in, you're supposed to get the thing up to 220, but I felt like if I got it pegged, uh, I was probably okay. I never pegged it though. That was one of the problems with my uh, contraption I built that I'll talk about. So we got that. So now we'll look at the actual uh, steam box that I made. Okay, so there she is in all her glory, my uh, steam box. And we'll zoom in on her. That's a piece of four inch PVC pipe. Schedule 40. Here's the uh, fitting for the uh, hose. I made this little door out of three-quarter inch plywood. It's on a hinge and it has this latch to keep it locked shut. Um, there is a drain hole on this side uh, because I had this end down. And my theory was the steam would go in this side, rise to the other side, and I had that elevated a little bit. Uh, and I had the temperature gauge on that side, which I'll talk about in a second. 
Uh, but let's let's continue on this side. Um, I put these bolts through. And you can see them going through. That way the uh, wood could sit on them instead of sitting down here and have 360 degrees of steam around it. So did that. That's why those are there. We'll go down the other end. Uh, this end here is missing the cap. When I was pulling it out of my storage room, it fell off into the abyss. Would have been a whole day to find that thing in the pile of junk it was sitting on. Uh, and this is, I did have a hole drilled in the cap, and that's where I had my little thermometer. Uh, and like I said, this end was elevated, so all the condensated steam would go down that way and drip out down that side. Now you can see, this thing is pretty warped. So even though I wasn't generating enough temperature, uh, I was still generating enough to, uh, to bend this. And I thought, well, maybe if I had put some insulation on it, it would have worked better. But I just watched an episode of Acorn to Arabella, which is the guys that are building this wooden boat. And they were steaming a frame, and they had a similar contraption. They didn't really go into the detail on it, but they generated so much steam, and they had blankets on it, that the thing looked like a wet noodle, this piece of PVC they had. So I don't know if there's a happy medium or, you know, it just doesn't work. But that was the only problem I had with it. Other than that, it worked. I mean, it worked good enough to... To get the job done for me so that's all that counted i think if i did it again i would uh, definitely uh, build a wooden box as described in the uh, instructions uh, with the steam generator i think that would be the better way to go you can insulate it or not and uh, i think it would pull the temperature up a little bit better and hold it and it would take a lot less time because i had to leave it in there a lot longer than they suggested just because i couldn't get it to uh couldn't get it to steam right because it couldn't get the temperature high enough. But anyways, in the end, it worked. So, job done. So now that you've seen everything that I uh, used to do this, I just have a few pictures of the actual day when I uh, bent one of the pieces. And I was the only one there, so there are no, not too many pictures. I just had, took pictures when I uh, was on a break from doing something. So, uh, yeah, here's the pictures of the uh, steam bending. going to be much simpler because I don't have to bend it but what I did and I'll just hold it on here where it's going to go what I did when I was at the boat is this was like sticking up like this and I had to put a screw in and push it down and push it down and keep working my way down as I as I worked uh, to the bottom but in this case I don't have to do that it's much simpler uh, this piece is actually a little wider than it needs to be for this so I'm just going to push it back that way I've already marked where I'm going to put the screws just to speed it up here and so um, yeah I'm going to use the I'm going to just line up the bottom so I know where I'm going okay this is going to be very similar to when I attach these pieces I'm going to wet these two pieces out with unthickened epoxy I'm also going to put some down here it has nothing to do with this video um, segment. I'm just putting it down here because I have to put two coats down here to smooth this out a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to wet them out. I'm going to mix up uh, the rest of the epoxy and the pail with some uh, colloidal silica to thicken it up. I'll apply it on this surface here and then attach this piece back on there and clean it up. Uh, and we'll put the plugs in and uh, we'll go from there.
final installation of these two trim pieces went pretty easy. Uh, that was mostly to the fact that I had these pieces on and off so many times trying to get the compound angle cut right at the uh, bottom of the trim piece where it met the uh, sidewall support. So let's check out the pictures and uh, see the installation. is for uh, painting some more uh, pieces up on the flybridge. Uh, and the pieces I'm talking about are the underside of the cabinet, main cabinet, and um, the insides of the uh, passenger uh, seat bases. I'm not going to get into the detail of the painting here, uh, the technical aspect of it. I'm going to do a video uh, just on painting, maybe not just on painting, but just mostly focused on painting. I'm going to be painting the mock-up and all this. And that's coming up in the not too distant future, so uh, I'm not going to get into it here. Uh, but, you know, painting underneath this dashboard, as you can imagine, uh, with a respirator and a paper suit and uh, in this confined space, um, even sanding and prepping is even worse. Uh, it wasn't that fun. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but, you know, it has to be done and you do it. Um, so, anyways, uh, one of the other things you're going to see uh, kind of as a side thing in these painting photos, since I'm up on the flybridge taking these photos, is the uh, helm seat base. Now this round mahogany piece, I had it all fiberglass and filled it in and ready to go. Um, probably the last video, I think. Um, but once I put the uh, aluminum uh, actual seat pedestal on there, it was kind of like a leaning tower of Pisa, you know, leaning towards the starboard side. I'm like, oh, man, this looks like junk. Uh, I don't know what happened there, you know, I probably used a level, and that's a no-no on a boat. Um, the boat probably wasn't leveled off. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so I had to like sand down the whole port side of this base piece, so you'll see that with all the fiberglass kind of sanded off. So. So this next segment is about uh, fiberglassing the foredeck. Uh, I got two layers on there. Uh, if you want to see how I do fiberglassing, you know, check out episode 14 and 14A. Um, that shows everything I kind of did here on the boat with this kind of fiberglass. Um, 
Uh, it was a little stressful just with the larger pieces. I was doing it by myself, so um, it was just like a move, 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 got to keep it going here. But um, came out okay. So. Okay, well that's going to do it for um, all the uh, progress updates for uh, this episode that covered the, uh, was the second part of the 2015 projects. Uh, so now I'll talk about the uh, new release dates. Now, um, I've been doing it every week. Uh, I tried two weeks for a little while, didn't like it, it was too long. Uh, but one week uh, this summer has been a bit of a, a push for me. And um, this is the end of the summer. The temperatures are starting to get colder at night and I really have to get a lot of epoxy work done here at the boat. Um, so I'm gonna have to take some more time to get into that. Uh, another factor that's gonna lead to this uh, change in the thing is uh, the actual video I put out with fiberglass and where I chopped the whole section out and really, uh, yeah, that was a mess up. Um, rushed it too much, worked too much, too many late nights on it, so yeah. That's going to give me a little more time to you know, vet the thing out before I put it out the door. Um, yeah, and so that's that's the reason why. So I figure I'm going to try to uh, split it up in the middle here um, and do a 10-day release. Um, that's why you're getting this video on a Tuesday. Because my plan is to put them out on a Tuesday and then go 10 days and put them out on a Friday and then go 10 days or I think about actually 11 days and go out on a Tuesday and it'll just alternate that way. Uh, for the months of September, October, and maybe a little bit into November, then I'll probably reevaluate because um, the time here for working would be a little less, anyways. I'll see, maybe I'll go back to uh, once a week again. I don't know, I'll, I'll figure that out. I'm kind of just flying by the seat of my pants here um, and just doing what I need to do to um, keep my sanity and keep the boat progress going and put out some videos for people to check out. So anyways, um, that's going to be the new thing. The next uh, video I think I'm going to put out on uh, be the 13th. That's the tentative date. Don't hold me to it. Um, but yeah, that's how we're going to go forward for a little while. So anyways, until then, have a good one. And we'll see you really soon right here on Renovation and Sportfish.